Hello, I'm Dr. Heidi and welcome to week six of the 2019 Thousand Word Challenge. This week I'm going to be doing a reading. This will be good listening practice and good reading practice for you. I've picked something that's a little more challenging than the previous lessons, but if you study the language in this text, I think you'll find it very beautiful. The text is from Jane Eyre, which was written by Charlotte Bronte in 1847. So some of the writing is a little different from what you're used to. Some of the words in this text have been replaced by easier words because I really want you to have success in understanding. Like last week, we'll have the reading, words in context first. Then I'll give you the words in definition. Here is the reading. Jane Eyre by Charlotte Bronte, Chapter 1. There was no possibility of taking a walk that day. We had been wandering, indeed, in the leafless shrubbery an hour in the morning, but since dinner, Mrs. Reed, when there was no company, dined early. The cold winter wind had brought with it clouds so gloomy and a rain so strong that further outdoor exercise was now out of the question. I was glad of it. I never liked long walks, especially on chilly afternoons. Dreadful to me was the coming home in the raw twilight with frozen fingers and toes and a heart saddened by the complaining of Bessie, the nurse, and humbled by the consciousness of my physical inferiority to Eliza, John, and Georgiana Reed. The said Eliza, John, and Georgiana were now clustered around their mamma in the drawing room. She lay on a sofa by the fireside, and with her darlings about her, for the time neither fighting nor crying, looked perfectly happy. Me, she had stopped from joining the group, saying, she regretted the need to keep me at a distance, but that until she heard from Bessie and could discover by her own observation that I was trying to acquire a more pleasing and childlike character, a more attractive and lively manner, something lighter, freer, more natural, as it were, she really must exclude me from privileges attended only for contented, happy little children. What did Bessie say I have done? I asked. Jane, I don't like protesters or questioners. Besides, there is something truly forbidding in a child talking to her elders in that manner. Be seated somewhere, and until you can speak pleasantly, remain silent. A breakfast room adjoined the drawing room. I slipped in there. It contained a bookcase. I soon took a volume, taking care that it should be one stored with pictures. I mounted into the window seat, gathering up my feet, I sat cross-legged like a Turk, and having drawn the red curtain nearly closed, I was sheltered in double retirement. Folds of red curtains shut in my view to the right hand. To the left were the clear windows, protecting but not separating me from the gray November day. At times, while turning over the pages of my book, I studied the aspect of that winter afternoon. The distant view offered a pale blank of mist and cloud near a scene of wet lawn and storm-beach shrub, with ceaseless rain sweeping away wildly before a long and lamentable blast. I returned to my book, Bewick's History of British Birds. The text I cared little for, generally speaking, and yet there were certain introductory pages that, child as I was, I could not pass quite as a blank. There were those which treat the haunts of seabirds, the solitary rocks and cliffs, by them only inhabited on the coast of Norway, studded with islands from its southern extremity, the Lindness or Nays, to the North Cape. Nor could I pass unnoticed the suggestion of the bleak shores of Lapland, Siberia, Spitsbergen, Nova Zembla, Iceland, Greenland, with the vast sweep of the Arctic zone and those isolated regions of depressing space, that reservoir of frost and snow, where firm fields of ice, the accumulation of centuries of winters, glazed in alpine heights above heights, surround the pole and concentrate the multiplied rigors of extreme cold. Of these death-white realms, I formed an idea of my own, 
shadowy, like all the half-comprehended notions that float dim through children's brains, but strangely impressive. The words in these introductory pages connected themselves with the succeeding scenes and gave significance to the rock standing up alone in a sea of waves and spray, to the broken boat stranded on a deserted coast, to the cold and ghostly moon glancing through bars of cloud at a wreck just sinking. Here are your words for this week. Company, guests or visitors, especially at your home. In the story you learn when there is no company or no visitors, they dine early. Question, the possibility or chance of something happening or of someone doing something used in negative statements. For example, there was no question of escape. In the text, the idiom is used out of the question, which means not possible or allowed. Aspect, the way a person, place, or thing appears. Exercise, physical activity that is done in order to become stronger or healthier. Possibility, a chance that something might exist, happen, or be true the state or fact of being possible. C, the salt water that covers much of the Earth's surface. Volume, a book or a book that is part of a series or set of books. Extreme, very great in degree. Snow, soft white pieces of frozen water that fall to the ground from the sky in cold weather. Mount, to seat yourself on a horse, bicycle, etc. In the story, Jane mounts onto the window seat to read. Privilege, a right or benefit that is given to some people and not others. Shelter, the state of being covered and protected from danger, bad weather, etc. Cluster, to come together to form a group. Wander, to move around to or go to different places, usually without having a particular purpose or direction. Curtain, a piece of cloth or other material that is hung to protect or hide something. Consciousness, awareness or knowledge of something specified. In the text, Jane has a consciousness or awareness that she is different from the other children. Accumulation, to increase gradually in amount as time passes. Bleak, not warm, friendly, cheerful, etc. Shrub, a plant that has stems of wood and is smaller than a tree, a bush. Shrubbery, a group of shrubs planted together. So this text was a little difficult in parts, but it's a really beautiful piece of writing. If you didn't understand it all, I recommend you listen to it again or read it to yourself. I'll put it on the course website. Notice the way the author describes the bleak scenery, both outside of her window and in the pictures in the book. Notice how bleak she feels because she doesn't have the privilege of the other children and she is not treated well. Did you notice the other children's mother tells her she has to go away because she didn't behave well? But when she asks what she did wrong, the mother tells her to go away because she is asking questions. I felt really bad for her. Here's some of the language she uses to express this loneliness. Bleak, depressing, the rock standing alone, the deserted coast, the lamentable or sad blast of air, gloomy. Notice that she also uses words with similar meanings to convey an aspect of the weather, such as ice, snow, rain, frozen fingers and toes, mist, clouds, storm, extreme cold. Let me know if you enjoyed listening to this story. I can read some more in a future video. Be sure to visit the course website for this week's free worksheet, download Vocab Victor to help improve your vocabulary, and come back next week for 20 more words. Thank you. Mm -hmm.